Here we are with a driving review of the all-new Golf R. This Golf 8 in the new sportiest form, the top-of-the-line model with a torque splitter at the rear, all-wheel drive. This will be very interesting, especially in the driving part. Everything you need to know, exterior, interior and the sporty driving experience, as you know, with Thomas in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Here in the front, the Golf 8R, you can see here the headlamp form is different compared to the Golf 7. And then our logo here, data running light here, and also continued with the middle light strip there. That looks really, really fancy, definitely. The main headlamp unit comes LED standard, optional than the Matrix LED, which we also have here right today. Lower part, black contrast, as we know from the R design, and really strong also this lower bumper. It looks sporty, but still elegant. What do you think? The length is at 4 meters 28, 14 foot 4, or 168 inches. And wheels would standard come with 18 inch. These here are the optional 19 inch wheels. This car also has the performance pack, by the way. And then you can see this massive styling, blue contrast brake calipers, and also the special typical Volkswagen R color of lapis blue. I think a very beautiful and fitting one. It would come with a standard sport suspension, already stiffer, and minus 20 millimeters lower in comparison to a normal Golf. This one here equipped with the DCC dynamic chassis control, the adaptive suspension. And typical strong C pillar here for that Golf in this generation. Hasn't been much change as for the dimensions. It's more about happen in the interior of the cockpit and most important thing about the new Golf R generation this year the all-wheel drive Golf of course Golf R front plus rear on demand maximum of 50-50 distribution but then new torque splitter on the rear axle that means that you can split the torque between the wheels on the rear axle and most extreme example would be the drift mode which is included in the performance pack and then up to 100% of the rear torque can be sent to one wheel and this can enable drifting and even when dry asphalt because when you for example steer to the right and then have 100% of the rear torque right here then this makes the car swing around and this will have a massive effect on driving. In the rear we can see a typical golf hatch style however with this massive rear wing right here then the Volkswagen R logo and the new Golf 8 tail lamps here three-dimensional more modern in the lower part the R shows the black contrast and the diffuser style Next to the optional Akrapovic exhaust, 3,700 euros extra in this case. But yeah, especially these exhausts, you know, crackles and plops, this is really increased by that. Top speed, by the way, with the performance pack, the vehicle has it from 250 kilometers to 270 kilometers an hour, then, which is 167 miles per hour. Under the hood, we have the well-known two-liter four-cylinder here then with 320 horsepower, turbo petrol engine, 420 newton meters of torque, 4.7 seconds is the acceleration figure, 200 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. That's 1.5 seconds faster than the Golf GTI. And the special thing here today, once again, all-wheel drive, of course, for the Golf R. And then at the rear axle, this torque vectoring, torque distribution between the wheels. This will give more agility. And you can see here, no gas struts, unlike in the Octavia RS.
first of all, door closing sound. Hmm, that's strange. I mean, usually the Golf is leading the door closing sound, but here, I don't know why, but that doesn't sound so much golfer like. Hmm. Then, inside of the doors, here in the front part, it's somewhat soft touch. Here, even softer than for your elbow. Reasonable space at the inside here. This is also felt then. And then a new steering wheel, capacitive buttons, our logo, lower part, digital instruments, and the seats. As also for the GTI, here in the R, come with the sporty integrated head restraint form. Standard would be that it's with fabric and also with the R stamping. Stick with the base fabric seats, they're more breathable and also more comfortable. This one today, the animal skin option. Getting inside, typical compact hatch style, shoe tap of course, and yeah, it's a standard golf seating position, compact hatch, and when I put the seat in the lowest position with one with A6 or 6 at one still enough headroom left. There's also this panoramic roof. Now with this slider to open it in the middle part here, when I turn on the ignition, slide like this, and then we can open it right here and leaves some light inside. Overall, standard good seating position, steering wheel, manual control, up and down, in and out, everything as it should be. Interior overview, here is soft touch dashboard, left side 10.25 inch digital instruments, two more deals to that, shifting panels here at that sporty steering wheel, blue contrast stitches, flat bottom R logo, capacitive buttons, also soon more about that. It looks fancy, it's also illuminated, but yeah, not the best to control while driving. Right side, the R, just like the GTI and so on. Oh yeah, that's here the um, gesture function. Receives the bigger infotainment system, being 10 inch, and also more to that software here very soon. Volume slider is right here, and temperature slider is right here. And yeah, once again, doesn't give you the best feeling, um, again, especially to control it while driving. And that you access the climate control by clicking here and then you can also have heated and cooled seats in this case then for example you always have to go back to the main menu right here via this um, this mode there this is the main menu doesn't look too fancy i think apple carplay integration goes like this and with auto also available and also wireless function but i rather prefer the cable oh yeah about the sound system so let's listen to some music here and there we go. Yeah, I slided it at the steering wheel, but again, I could also do it here. And... Wow, this is the Harman Kardon sound system, and Ooh, this is some fancy stuff. So, I mean, it's always hard to rate that wire microphone, you know, for you guys, but I can tell you this is a very elaborated sound. So, yeah, way to go. Let's party, guys. <laughs> so, and last but not least, Let's take it to the GPS right here. And you see it could be more responsive, definitely. But yeah, that's the thing here about this new infotainment system. It also depends on the time you're using it. Um, it also depends then on the cloud capacity because sometimes I experienced also with Seat and Skoda vehicles of this new generation. Sometimes more people use it and then it's slower. And sometimes, you know, it's a little bit faster. Uh, today is actually a quite good day for the infotainment system overall, no failures so far. And the rear view camera looks like this. The helping lines also adapt a little bit when you turn the steering wheel. You can see it right there, but resolution could be a little bit better. So I said 10 inches standard, but if you wondered about the difference between Discover Media and Discover Pro, here, Discover Media would just show the GPS on the right side. Discover Pro makes it possible to show both the GPS map right and also on the left side than in the digital instruments. Steering wheel here, you can also browse through the menu a little bit. Heated steering wheel here, for example, here you change the view. And on the left side, actually, setting the cruise control. This is interesting because here one press is plus one kilometer and a hard press is plus 10 kilometers. A little bit hard to do that while driving with these capacitive buttons. In the Tiguan, for example, they changed it already that resume and set is plus and minus one and this is plus and minus 10. 
maybe that will be changed with a facelift or something. And then the R mode, this directly then hops to the um, R driving, to the race driving mode. Um, and it depends on when you click it once, it changes more like individually, like this, you know, here. And when you press it through, then it always goes directly to the race. And inside race, then you can switch to drift or Nürburgring, this Nordschleifen mode. And um, I'll talk more about that later, just very briefly. Here um, in the Nürburgring mode, the shifting characteristic is changed, shifts up later, shifts down earlier. Also EC is optimized and uh, the whole shifting is uh, yeah, sportier, whole car, sportier, chassis and the suspension all stiffened up. Here drift mode, this you can activate on, on closed circuit for example or on empty parking lot. And this um, delivers up to 100% of the rear torque to the outside wheel that you can really spin it around. These are the digital instruments and this is probably my favorite view with this RPM focus but you can have a more tech or modern view for example, change it right here or like this, the more classic view, this is also possible or then this one here, map all over the place. And of course always an interesting option is the head-up display right here, quite clear to read. Other than that you can already see the ambient lighting integrated right here, it's a nice horizontal design, some hotkeys right here for example for accessing the climate function for the driving modes. However, here in the R you can also do it at the steering wheel and this is for example for accessing assistance systems. But what I want, would like to see here is a hotkey to the GPS. That would have been more important, I think. Let's see here the ambient lighting, just between here and soft touch here. And this is also feeling quite nicely. So I think this area is well done. In the lower area here, smartphone connection, two times USB-C, and this illuminated golf lettering there in the background. But you can also put the inductive charging pad here, yeah, underneath. Here then, yeah, I use this <laughs> for the garage beeper, um, this cubby hole, shift by wire DSG, so it means there's no mechanical link, therefore they could integrate it you know, in, a, in a small space-saving way. And the transitions then between like, D and R and so on and back and forth again are really really short. Then this area here you have the cup holders you can also dissolve it basically like this then here and then to have a power supply and um, this is then here the armrest with the leather red cover well attached and more space underneath. Car key high gloss black looks fancy but yeah, looking also for scratches R logo at the other side and then what I want to show you here, look at the form of the key, you know, the exact form, the outline of the key. You got that? I mean, not 100%, but at least some resemblance to, you know, know what I mean? And in the rear, remember that the Golf here has the short wheelbase of this MQB platform and that means it directly fits for tall adults. The Sports is of course quite voluminous, but yeah, it's still, I do hit it a little bit with my knees when I'm also sitting in the front. So it's really, really close here. When you go for the Škoda Octavia or the Seat Leon, they have the longer wheelbase. Here the Golf and the Audi A3 have the shorter wheelbase and that's why you don't have too much space here in the rear. Headroom-wise, that fits here again with one with A6 or 6 with one, but together with the legroom not being, you know, that, you know, that much in general, and then with the Bologna sport seats, it gets really close. Other than that, the seating comfort in the rear is actually quite okay. Isofix here at the outsides each. Then you have here some cup holders, but not adaptive. Ski hatch. And sitting here in the middle part is actually, yeah, somewhat feasible. And then you have a rear climate unit with two more USB-C chargers. Manual hatch, folding the logo right here, and then the standard golf trunk. It's actually well usable. You see here, cabin trolley does also fit in in a vertical way. In this case, underneath we have the additional Harman Kardon sound system equipment. The length here is 77 centimeters. This is a good meter of width, and the height to the cover here. So just over 40 centimeters and I fold already the two-third of the seating row here then one meters and 50 in length. Welcome to 
welcome to Thomas's Active Driving Lounge with the new Golf R, Golf 8R. One pressing here on the R button once, just normal, goes to the drive selection and so on. But when I press a little bit further, like deeper in, it goes to the race mode directly. Then I can also sw switch to the, yeah, Nürburgring special mode, thanks to Benny Leuchter, VW Works driver, test driver, and he explained me that mode to me earlier and wow. <laughs> you hear that plopping from the from the exhaust? Wow. So we're doing an acceleration right now, but we first let this car pass and then 30 kilometers to let's go. That's 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, and here also at higher speeds. Yeah, that's really feeling like a Nürburgring Nordschlag already. Very stable, lane change, super calm and collected. Wow, hardly any input from the steering wheel, really precise. Suspension is keeping it tight, but at the same time, very comfortable. So not pushing me anything in the lower back then from the ground. Wow. Of course, now quite loud in here, but of course we're driving really, really fast. Wow, really stable now. Good on the brakes, really precise performance. Car shifting down itself, of course, DSG, a dual clutch transmission. And especially here in this Nürburgring mode, um, you know, race driver Benny Leuchter told me earlier that he actually developed this mode in a way that, especially on Nürburgring Nordschleife, so you get on the brakes and then the car is shifting down so much earlier that you are in the right gear before the next corner appears. That's very interesting, definitely. And also the load changes, um, actually, um, you know, first to, to the front, is actually also enhanced by that. And when you have a load change to the front, you, you have more precise steering, more load on the front wheels, and then you can take the next corner a little bit better. Now in the, uh, in the tunnel here, so let's put down the window and listen to that. <laughs> oh my God. Oh yeah. And one more acceleration, I would say. Ah, yeah. So, greetings to the guys from Akrapovich, I would say. <laughs> yeah, so especially in the Nürburgring mode, this um, exhaust plop, this is really, really strong. And you hear how the, the gears are being kept. So, um, and for the first time, when you go to the manual mode here, like this, you know, with the shifting pedals, and I accelerate without shifting, you know, the car is not shifting up. and. Before, like when you had the sportiest mode in the Golf R, at some point it did shift up. But here now, like second gear, for example, here it just goes in the ref limiter. Don't do that, you know, not too too good, of course. But then I just did it now here on purpose that you can see that it really keeps the gear. And that's for, of course, professional racing drivers and also for semi-professional racing drivers, really important to keep that sporty function so you can always stay in this sporty gear. And there's always like a, here in the Nürburgring mode, like an S plus shifting mode. So all when you win, you keep it automatic. Still, it goes so high, shifts so late and shifts down so early. That's the special thing about the Nürburgring mode. Well, you also have the drift mode. And when you have that one, of course, not to be used in the city, just on closed circuits. But um, I mean, when you drive normally, it doesn't have not so much is happening. However, the EC is also downgraded as for that. So um, shifting also enhanced in that way. No <laughs> city traffic. I just picked it now and keep it calm as for now. The thing is then that in the drift mode, up to 100% can be put on one single wheel in the rear, like 100% from the torque that is already at the rear axle. And then we can get out of the corners even better and can really put it to a drift even on dry asphalt that is even possible 
but of course when the road is a little bit wet you have to be even more careful however even if you keep it just in the like normal sports mode sports mode for example one of the key new features is not sure what this guy is doing like hmm. so even if i accelerate out here i already feel it the golf r of course being all wheel drive front plus rear so rear on demand maximum 50 50 of the physical power available but now in this generation we have that torque split in the rear and so the outside the corner outside wheel can receive more power and that pushes the car out of the corner even more extreme as i just told you in the drift mode but already when normal driving this is happening or then especially even more in the sports mode and this is a very, very cool feature we already experienced it in the vw tiguan for example the tiguan r and that made cars so much more sporty and this is the same case here so you totally forget that this is a front wheel driven car and we'll soon come to some very you know windy corners uh, where we can really experience that once again let's uh, yeah that's the only thing you know you can access to the race mode directly but Nürburgring you have to go then right here and um, yeah I'm not sure how you can really pick it up on camera, but this uh, cracking uh, exhaust note, that is really something, especially here in the tunnel. And well, at least I'm just annoying some other car driver with that here, and not some inhabitants somewhere. So we're in the Nürburgring mode, and well, how's the acceleration when we are already at speed, getting out of the tunnel, 80 kilometers to whatever, let's see. Again, 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. You know, in that high-speed corner, such a good grip from the vehicle. Wow, it feels so, so good in the handling, so neutrally balanced. Um, and I really have to say, the Golf R was already one of my favorite track cars because you don't necessarily need a true sports car building form to have fun on the racetrack because this one here can be handled so well and although it's front wheel driven here with the all wheel drive and now with this torque split it almost feels rear wheel biased that's so cool and wow I mean these speeds here feel like nothing once again for the car hard on the brakes you know still very stable really well done and now a normal motorway speed here 100 kilometers an hour 60 miles an hour noise insulation is very good keeping it all calm and silent just what you hear is all with this engine sound of course wow once again so much fun here with the golf r and wait a minute i just forgot that the new golf has, doesn't have the best infotainment system i can just say with the golf r yeah you can really forget that <laughs> Right guys, Nürburgring mode once again because Benny Leuchter, race driver who developed this program, told me the best way to get up Autogefühl Hill would be the Nürburgring mode. And now we have this torque split in the rear, excellent. Let's see how that one performs. And well, uphill performance is already awesome. And once again, we have to remind ourselves it's a front rear platform, but we will drive. And yeah, I really feel how the rear axle comes around just a little bit more than it usually does with the normal Golf and that really brings a lot of driving fun, additional driving feeling and you can just say how calm this car stays in every situation that's really cool it's no wonder that it's uh, you know scored a very, very good Nürburgring Nordschleife lap now let's push a little bit more road is still a little bit wet have to be careful wow Source cracking note once again. Once again, so much fun with this precise steering. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. And how spontaneous the throttle reaction is. And what I really want to know is with that drift mode here. Let's see, because now there's a hairpin corner on the left. Now I should get even more power. I need to let this car pass. 
And now I should get even more power on the outside wheel. <laughs> yeah, it works indeed. It, uh, that's messing with your head because you think like, wait a minute, this is not a real driven car, but that worked. I mean, I, I could really hear and feel how the, the, the outside wheel you know, on, uh, in the rear was spinning a little bit at that wet road in that hairpin corner. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you see, even more possible now with that sportiest golf ever. Now here in the construction lane, turn on the travel assist and that travel assist is keeping me in the lane. The steering feels now a little bit loose and as it would be, you know, steering by itself and <laughs> actually doing that. So it is somewhat intrusive, yes, but so far doing a good job. Here it is a very good task to do that in, inside the construction lane because that's harder to do than inside the normal wide two autobahn lines here in Germany. So, and I think so far, so I did not steer at all here, yeah, just keeping my hands on the steering wheel as the function then here for that too. Yeah, but I mean, a little bit nervous, could maybe a little bit calmer, but overall I think that's, yeah, we can say that's also well done. And you know, at 80 kilometers an hour, once again, very calm and collected. So this one is something for windy corners, but also something for a longer motorway trip. The seat form is also good. Again, more comfort if you would have the standard fabric surface because it adapts more to the body. Doesn't get that, get that stretched and stiff like the animal skin surface here. But the seat form itself is actually also suitable for longer journeys. This new Golf 8, new Golf generation, uh, I want to steer that outgoing myself and not trusting in that 100% actually. <laughs> so this new Golf A generation in general has more seating comfort. That's of course something quite cool. As for the blind spot monitor that will appear in the side mirrors. And you know there's an extra feel for that. Also of course something you should definitely go for. And what about some normal driving, everyday driving situations? driving in the comfort mode, 19 inch wheels and of course you do feel that you do lose comfort in everyday driving life although we have the DCC, the adaptive suspension built in here. Well you could go or could just stick with the 18 inch wheels that would help the comfort definitely but of course 20 millimeters lower this suspension and stiffer setup at some point you know there's no wonder. However still no problem to use it as a primary vehicle so you still get the normal things that you get from driving in VW Golf so this very good chassis evolved throughout the generations feels also you know very controlled and good in handling just when cruising around the city and so on and of course the good noise insulation so very silent both at high speeds and also at low speeds so Indeed, it gives you this typical standard golf driving experience, which is more like, okay, this is like the, you know, the baseline, and then everything orients on that, like a, you know, like a, like a benchmark. You know, in some things, maybe it's not benchmark anymore, as for the infotainment system, for sure, electronics and so on, they still have to work on that. However, the basic things, hardware-wise, once again, very very well done and so it really calms you down when you use it in a normal comfort mode. This crisp and precise steering also helps you in city driving because it's really easy to ease it around and again no dead zone angle here when steering that's also very very cool. Road is still a little bit wet and in a comfort mode you can also drive this normal um, town experience because the thing is when you go here to a race mode <laughs> and the RPMs go up that, that high, um, you think like, I can't stand it anymore. I need to go to the racetrack. I cannot drive the normal road anymore. So that's, that's definitely a funny thing. And even more so when you are in a, like in a Nürburgring road or so, uh, it's almost unbearable to drive. And this is like, you know, 
you, you can always let the exhaust plop. <laughs> when they're saying like, what kind of idiot is driving here? So, <laughs> just a little push on the throttle. And wow, I mean, especially now we've been going down here and so on. This is really giving a very plopping experience. Not sure if you can really, don't, don't want to wake up anyone here. So I go back to the comfort mode. But what I mean by unbearable is, you know, these sports mode, they are indeed in this generation that sporty that you, that it's, you know, really um, hard to to stay calm when just doing the city driving. So I'd rather not use them in, uh, while city driving because I'm always thinking like, okay, I need to push the throttle right now. So it's better to keep, uh, the, keep the comfort mode and really st stay calm in the city. Also when the road noise would usually be a little bit higher when the road is still wet, everything once again calm and collected. As for the assistance systems, um, you know, I had one problem earlier that when starting the car some assistance systems fail turned up and that's again something we have to keep in mind. It's not only an infotainment system, it's also some other parts of the electronics. The bad thing is it's 2020, they should be better with that and they came from very good infotainment system and flawless uh, electronics and so on and then they basically downgraded that but the good thing about that is these electronic parts and software it can still be upgraded you know so I'm really hoping they work on that I can just stress again the amount of work and engineering development that has gone into this car it's absolutely astonishing and once again, it's a race car for the city, basically. And now to our conclusion for today with the all-new Golf R. Visually, I mean, you can argue about if the turned around headlamps comparing to the Golf 7 generation, if they're more beautiful or not. I think still a very likable car, especially here in the lapis blue color and a great sport look, but not too extreme. Interior, generally with a nice build quality, the user interface with the capacitive touch buttons on the steering wheel and the new infotainment system. Not the biggest fan of it, probably to me the weakest point about, uh, about this car. However, seating comfort is very good and especially even more so if you take the base fabric sport seats with the nice integrated head restraint. Here with the short wheel base, Golf and Audi A3, you don't have too much space in the rear. You would rather go for a Seat Leon or a Cupra Leon or the Skoda Octavia RS if you want more rear legroom. Still a very well usable car and also the daily driver. It's comfortable enough in everyday driving situations and it's definitely the sportiest Golf so far because it has this torque split at the rear. You feel you can really get around the corners and <laughs> if you use that drift mode you think like, am I driving a rear wheel driven car? That's very, very well done. Of course, just on closed circuits, you know. So, but in general, also with normal sporty driving modes, we can have a lot of fun. The Golf is, to me, also a very, very good track car. You can drive it in the city, but you can easily also drive it on the racetrack. If you take it as a sense here, like this, performance pack, a crumble of exhaust, of course, you do exceed 50,000 euros. And yeah, that of course hurts then definitely for Golf. But in comparison to other sports cars, it's still a quite good price performance ratio. What's your take? Leave us your comment right there. See you in our comment section and also see you next time.